uh, to help you guys close more of that rehash business. What we're finding here at Hatch, based on the data that we collect, is uh, you're leaving about seven to ten percent of your revenue on the table by not doing rehash. Uh, so, um, my goal for today is to help you guys, you know, accomplish rehash and, and do it right. So, yeah, let's go ahead and kick things off here. My name is Josh Carter. I'm the marketing manager here at Hatch and work with a lot of our partners like James Hardy, uh, helping maximize the value to, to their contractor base. Uh, and so I'm really excited to be working really closely with Ben. Ben owns the, the Carolinas uh, with respect to, to James Hardy and really excited to have him on. He's got a lot of insight that he's going to share uh, as to, you know, what he's seen on the rehash side of things with his uh, contractor base. Uh, so Ben, thanks for hopping on, man. Really appreciate it. You know, Josh, I really appreciate it too. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben Redling. I'm the regional account manager for the Carolinas, particularly focusing on repair and model contractors. Um, those of you who are part of the Contract Alliance program uh, will know that you have a similar rep in that role, who our main role is to help you meet your business goals, whether it be sales, marketing, production, best practices. So I work with guys that do 20 million a year to guys that do half a million a year and everything in between. So it really comes down to what's your goals, what's your focus, how we can help you meet those goals. Great stuff. Uh, so I, I wanna I wanna start this whole presentation off with some some data. I think data should really drive decision making and how we approach rehash. Um, I'm a big fan of data. I'm a marketer uh, by trade, and and we use data to drive pretty much every decision we make here. Uh, and so what we're finding is that the expectations for the latter half of the year is that we're going to see a lot of big project spending. Uh, so I'm sure you guys have seen this. You know, folks. Um, have the cash and they want to spend the money or they have you know of course those low interest rates so there's a lot of money floating around here for uh for big project spending and so what that means is that you're going to likely have some longer sales cycles uh you're going to have homeowners request more quotes than they may have traditionally before and you're going to need to establish uh, that greater trust uh, establish more rapport uh, with the homeowner to get them to choose you to do your project and a big piece of that is going to be in your follow-up a lot of times sales reps will let's be let's be frank here guys can be lazy uh you can hop from appointment to appointment uh, follow up kind of falls by the wayside and so i want to help you guys today establish this professionalized follow-up this rehash in your organization uh, that helps you create those relationships with those homeowners as part of that follow-up to the quote that you guys provide uh, in order for you guys to get those jobs um, and in, in this market right now with folks projected to, uh, to homeowners projected to be spending more money on these projects, uh, rehash is incredibly important now more than ever. And rehash is also gonna be important later on in the year when you guys aren't as busy, right? So winter time when you guys are looking for leads, let's milk everything that we can out of each of those leads. Cause if you do that, uh, you're gonna close more business and, and, and keep uh, business flowing throughout the winter time. And I would also add to Josh, a big part of where the economy is now, everyone's so busy. Homeowners are looking for anyone of quality that's in front of them. A big part of this, though, is even though everyone's busy, professionalism is important. The automation, the follow-up that often gets lost the wayside, you can ask for that higher price point just by being the guy that follows up. So, 100%. I always like to do this logo slide. We work with a lot of James Hardy contractors. I know many of you guys are on the webinar right now. Uh, some of these are, 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 your, are your customers, Ben, like Carolina. Um, great customers and really excited to be working with James Hardy contractors, helping them sell more James Hardy by doing rehash, right? So I uh, always like to include that quote from, from Kevin over at James Hardy, that we're the secret weapon that helps contractors win more jobs in less time. How we do that is with rehash. Um, really, that's the the evolution of our business here at Hatch. We started as sales consultants for uh, a local uh, Pella dealer, a Pella window dealer, and we essentially got a list of all their quoted leads that didn't buy, and we tackled them over text, we tackled them over email, we tackled them over phone, uh, but we were using all these different systems to do it, and it got really complicated, um, but either way, we were still able to book around $400,000 in rehash sales over the first uh, three months of of using these all these different solutions to do rehash. So we've figured, oh man, we got a, a way to do rehash. Let's just try to put everything into one product. Uh, and so that's what we did with Hatch. So now Hatch is a software product that is uh, one place for all your homeowner communication, helps you do rehash connected to your CRM. And I'll speak to that in a little bit. 
So let's take a step back. Obviously, you joined a rehash webinar, so you know what rehash is. Um, but for the sake of you know the different definitions that people have, I want to set the stage here. Uh, follow up to quoted leads that didn't buy is rehash. And that applies to short-term follow-up, like you just recently quoted a lead 24, 48 hours ago, uh, as well as that long-term follow-up. So maybe you quoted somebody two or three months ago that didn't buy and you want to go sort of breathe life into that lead. That's rehash. I don't know, Ben, you've got some thoughts on, on rehash and what you've seen uh, with your contractor base, right? Yeah, I don't have any direct numbers in front of me, but ultimately when, when the, the most of the time contractors send a, they ask them, Ben, I need more leads. I need more leads. Well, yep. I, my question is how many, how many customers, how many, how many leads have you gone on the last six months? And I said, well, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. Like when's the last time you followed up with those, those guys that didn't say, that said, Hey, I'm interested, but not right now. And they're going to see a blank basis. So the one that you've already spent the money, you've already spent the time nurturing those relationships. All it takes is a very easy of re, rehashing, remining those customers you've already talked to. One of the most cost efficient ways to lower your, your lead cost and ultimately close more projects. Hey, you talk about leading metrics, Ben. That cost per lead is absolutely critical, um, especially as we get into the winter time when everybody's going to be trying to get as many leads as possible. So. Instead of kind of defaulting to let's buy more leads, let's just try to milk everything that we can out of the current leads in our database. Seriously, guys, your, your CRM is your gold mine. All the leads that are sitting in your CRM, the dead ones, the ones that you, you know, recently quoted, it's a gold mine. Reinvigorate those leads. And we're going to talk through how to do that today with rehash. So let's start off with a poll. How are you guys, how well are you guys doing rehash today? Uh, first option is it's working well. Second option is it could use some work. It needs a lot of improvement and we don't do rehash at all. So curious, the folks on the line here, I see we have a lot of uh, exterior contractors, some James Hardy contractors jumping in here and looks like some of you guys could use some work on the rehash side. Definitely can help you guys there. And what I find is a lot of contractors, most contractors are doing rehash at, at some level. Very few are not doing it at all. I think it's sort of standard uh, to, to at least follow up once or twice with a quoted lead. Uh, it's just how you do it is absolutely critical. And, and that's what we're going to touch on today. That's interesting, Josh. No one said that's working well. So clearly there, everyone here thinks, so far I think there's needs to yeah. for improvement, which is great to hear. Great to hear. We got one person that's working well. All right, so my goal is oh, okay, to, well, my, my goal is to make you do it even better. Here we go. <laughs> Once I said that, it's going to be contrarian. I get it. Uh, of course, you got to have that. Uh, great. Well, thanks for participating, guys. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Before we get started, I, I, Ben, I want to give you an opportunity to share a little bit about the CAP program for those who aren't familiar, uh, and then we'll yeah, jump yeah, in. Yeah, real, real quick. Yeah, I'll take about five minutes, guys. Uh, real quick, uh, the CAP program, Contract Alliance program, is. James Hardy's way to partner with local small businesses to align our brands together to help you sell in the home. James Hardy's making a significant push doing direct marketing to the homeowner, helping to generate more leads down to our website, but ultimately to your local market. The CAP program is your way of aligning with us to leverage our brand to help you sell more board. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. And, and for those of you who have not seen this before, uh, we have recently updated our Contract Alliance program with a brand new portal, all spiffy and shiny. Uh, there is a, some new requirements to be signed up for, but ultimately, if, you, if you've not done it yet, please talk with your local James Hart representative or myself. We'll get our, my information to you all later today, and we can certainly walk you through the new portal and how to leverage it, how to manage your leads, leverage the Hardy store, use some of our third-party vendors like Hatch, uh, as well as to log your job to get that get your hardy points to as quickly as possible. Next slide. Um, real quick, it's a five-tier program. Um, James Hardy is a little unique in the fact that we don't require you to buy zip codes, okay? We don't require you guys to sell warranties. Ultimately, all we care about is volume requirements based off the market dynamics and customer satisfaction via the deal quality tool, okay? So this is a a fair and open market uh, marketplace, and we are neutral with this tool and allows those contractors that want to sell Hardy to differentiate themselves from everyone else in the marketplace to leverage the Hardy brand. And then lastly, go to the next slide for me real quick. 
Uh, you get rewards. So every job that you log with James Hardy, we actually give you Hardy reward points. Those can be spent on consumer products, trips, vacations, marketing tools. Even if you are using third-party vendors like Hover, you can actually leverage the Hardy points to help pay, pay for some of those as well. Any questions about the program, just feel free to either ask in the Q&A or uh, make sure to email me after the, after the call. Great stuff, Ben. It's an awesome program, and it's really cool to see the evolution of the Alliance program over the last just year and a half that I've been working with you guys. It's awesome. Uh, we're a messaging app here at Hatch. We help you guys specifically with two things. One is increase your appointment set rate by 10%. So for every lead that comes in, uh, you're going to set 10% more appointments by instantly engaging that lead over text, email, and voicemail. So however you guys get leads, we connect to your lead sources, whether you're buying leads from a home advisor or an Angie or a modernize, or, you know, you're driving traffic to your website, filling out a website form. The second a user, or excuse me, second a homeowner click submit, uh, we're instantly texting, emailing, and leaving a voicemail with that lead. And we're going to continue to follow up until you get a response. So we're all about helping you guys set more appointments as well on the rehash side, which we're going to be talking through today, increasing your close rate anywhere from seven to 10%. Like I mentioned before, most of the contractors that we work with see about 7% to 10% of revenue left on the table by not doing rehash right. And so today, I hope whether or not you use a tool like Hatch that you guys can come to the table and start improving your rehash program. So with Hatch, everything is in one place. So all your communications are in one place. We connect up to your CRM to automate every part of that whole sales process, that follow-up process that we talked through today, um, because we connect up to all the major CRMs in the space like your market sharp, your improvement 360, your job progress, you name it. And I would add too, real quick, if you guys are using a CRM, um, fantastic. Now I'm taking the next step with rehash with a tool like Hatch allows you to scale your business at a pace that you want to control and having that feed into the main CRMs once again with automation just makes your, you and your people that much more efficient. Appreciate that, Ben. So today we're going to be covering the traditional way of doing rehash, how rehash has evolved to the modern homeowner. Uh, messaging tactics that are going to work and how to handle the top common objections that we see today. So to jump right in, the old way of doing rehash just isn't working. So the traditional way that's been done for the past 20 so odd years uh, is you get a, you quote a lead, you get rejected, and then you just kind of automatically default to lowering the price. Uh, it makes the sales rep obviously not want to lose that, that margin, uh, so you lose a commission. So it puts pressure on the sales rep to Get that one call closed and i'm not saying there's a problem with the one call close if you can one call close power to you let's do it um but oftentimes it causes the sales rep to sort of provide that uncomfortable homeowner experience uh like sitting in the home waiting until the homeowner responds or, or makes a decision and makes the homeowner feel uncomfortable uh so let's combat that by instead of providing that you know uncomfortable homeowner experience let's provide more of a consultative relationship uh and the new way of doing it is by communicating with your non-buyers and creating those relationships. So not feeling the need to, to quickly just close them as soon as possible and sort of be a, be a quote unquote dog in the home. I mean, we gotta be really appropriate here with how we talk to the homeowners. So uh, Brian Gottlieb, he's the founder and CEO of Tundraland. I think he, he really embodied rehash really, really well. And, and I think they're like the number three remodeler in the US, but says rehash as a term is very transactional. You'd be talking with your non-buyer. So the way he's doing rehash is having professionalized follow-up after the quote is provided, uh, surfacing the objections and handling the objections after the appointment, uh, providing that comfortable and transparent relationship with the homeowner. So what does that actually look like? Uh, I'm gonna show you guys some examples in a bit of how folks are doing rehash appropriately. Um, but again, uh, you quote the lead, you have a professionalized follow-up after the appointment, you service the objection, and then you handle the objection. So in doing that, the sales rep goes from sort of this relationship where they feel the need to one call close, they want to rush the homeowner into making a decision, to realizing that, hey, I've got my rehash program on autopilot. Like I'm going to close this homeowner because I'm going to professionalize my sales follow-up. And so the sales rep is, is more inclined to go into the home, develop a consultative relationship, follow up, handle the objection, service the objection, and then hopefully, and more times than not, close the deal. And in doing so, I mean, there's a lot of benefit, and I mentioned seven to 10% increase in close rate. Uh, but it's important to talk through first, before we jump into actual like strategy 
let's talk through how you do rehash, right? So a lot of times people default to jumping on the phone, giving the homeowner a call, you know, maybe once, maybe twice. I think on average, we've seen folks based upon our survey data, will call a homeowner two times after they provide the quote. They're likely not going to get a hold of the homeowner because data shows that 97% of consumers ignore calls from unknown numbers. And what we're also finding is that more folks are actually preferring an unfamiliar company to contact them over text versus phone call. So I'm not saying guys to completely remove calling from your business. What I'm encouraging you guys to do, especially when you do rehash is start with a text first strategy, use text if you really need to get on the phone and you feel like that's gonna be really important for you to help either A, reset the appointment or, or B, close the deal, um, use texting to help you get that phone call. And so 95% of texts are actually open and read within three minutes. I'm sure you've seen these stats before. Texting is incredibly important. So as you follow up with the homeowner, if you can systematize using a tool like Hatch, that follow up after the appointment and say, hey, you know, how did, uh, how did our rep do? Um, any questions about the quote that we provided? I was looking over it, you know, had made a note to review. You know, you can make it personalized and can follow up in a way that's going to help you uh, get that business, that rehash business. So texting is incredibly important. Uh, if you want to also incorporate calling, I encourage you guys to use text to kind of lead into a call. When's a good time to connect on your quote? Something like that. And then you can just give them a call once they respond. But texting, we found to be very, very, very effective. And not just following up once, but following up multiple times. So a lot of people give up, like I mentioned, after maybe two touch points, we encourage you guys to implement what we call a six touch rehash strategy. So after you run the appointment, send a text, send an email, drop a voicemail, provide a phone call, whatever. Uh, day two, send a text, day three, send a text and an email, day four, you know, text, phone call, day five, text, or excuse me, day seven and day 10 send another text. So what we're finding is that oftentimes homeowners won't respond until the third touch point. Uh, I think on average, it was like 2.8 touch points on average it took to actually get a response from rehash campaign last time I checked. So it's important that you're not just following up once, but that you're following up multiple times. And if you guys can systematize that in your business and have it done all automatically for you, you totally should do that. And here's what it looks like inside of Hatch. So this is what we call a campaign builder. So day one, in this case, send a text. Day two, send an email, a text, and even drop a voicemail. So this is a actually pretty new technology that I encourage you guys to, to check out. It's called voicemail drop. So uh, essentially, it will show up as a missed call on the homeowner's phone, and then it'll leave a voicemail. So you actually don't have to call the homeowner manually. It's all done for you. You just drop a voicemail. And the voicemail could be something simple like, Hey, I was looking at your quote. Was curious if you had any questions. Would love to have a chat and see, you know, what we can what we can do for you. Uh, and it can be personalized, but obviously you wouldn't want to use first names because you're systematizing this. But you can make it super personalized. And we see people using voicemail drop. It's very effective. So, all I'm saying is, if there's if you guys can systematize this in your business, automate it. I encourage you guys to do that because, like I mentioned before, uh, sometimes it takes anywhere from from two to seven touch points after the appointment to get a homeowner to actually respond. They're busy, we're all busy. So systematize it, automate it, uh, and you're gonna close seven to 10% more business. And Josh, this what is, I like about that real quick, I just love the fact that you guys have the ability to pick and choose how that campaign's put together. So if you don't feel comfortable texting someone every single day for the next seven days, you don't have to. You can also uh, customize the voicemail to a point. You can do some things and make it, um, so it, it, it is a more consultative engagement with, uh, with, this, with this homeowner. Uh, so I, I really like the flexibility that Hatch brings with their tool here. Appreciate that. Yeah, and, and because we connect to your CRM, we can pull in, you know, their first name. So it could be like, you know, hey, hey, Josh, you know, was looking at your quote. Or it could be like, hey, Josh, I was, I saw you had an appointment on insert the date of the appointment. So you can make it super personalized, but it's all done automatically for you. And all you need to do, guys, is jump in when somebody responds. That's the beauty of it. So you get an alert on your phone when somebody responds to your rehash campaign, you can jump in, continue the conversation and sell that deal. Uh, this is an example of a real conversation. I wanna show you guys how this actually works in the real world using some of the templates that, that you guys can feel free to take a screenshot and copy paste uh, and use them in your follow-up in your business, whether or not you use a tool like Hatch. Uh, so day one, we said, hey, this is Nick with, we'll just say Nick siding and windows. 
I was looking at your quote one to see if you had any questions, any reason to not move forward. So we lead with that question, any reason to not move forward. Uh, usually that gets the homeowner to provide that reason, surface that objection so, so it could be handled. But in this case, the uh, Eric did not respond. So the homeowner didn't respond. So we follow up the next day. Hey, Eric, this is Nick with Nick siding and windows again. I want to make sure you have all the information you need to make a decision. We want to earn your business. How can I help? Well, Eric ended up responding to that second text message. So if, you know, if Nick had just given up after the first day and said, ah, it's a dead lead. Let's just let it sit in our CRM. Then we wouldn't have gotten this response. So Eric said, yes, I do. Everything you gave is perfect. I'm still waiting on a resolution for the roof. Adjuster was here yesterday and I've asked for a second. Bob says, no problem. Uh, when do you think would be a good time to follow back up with you? Hoping to have it settled this week. Perfect. If you don't mind, we will get in touch with you next week. So what ended up happening is uh, Nick was following up. Eric responded. One of the other sales reps in the company ha also has access to the rehash board, uh, the rehash workspace, the inbox inside of Hatch. And so Bob was able to jump into that conversation because Nick wasn't readily available at that time to respond. Uh, and so Bob was able to handle that, um, ask when it would be a good time to have to follow up, hoping to have it settled this week. And then Bob ended up following up the next week because they were able to surface that objection, understand you know the timing and when he should follow up. And as a result, the deal went from, if you look on the right, the deal on September 30th went from demo not sold in market sharp to sold in market sharp because he was able to service the objection and follow up at the appropriate time that met the homeowner's needs. So absolutely critical guys that you implement this multi-touch follow-up. And like I said before, texting is incredibly effective. People are much more honest over text uh, and they're gonna be more likely to service objections over text versus maybe knocking on their door or giving them a phone call. So now I wanna quickly go through, You know, I, I got probably about 10, 15 more minutes to jump through these guys, but I wanna, I wanna talk through some of the ways that uh, you can handle objections appropriately in your business. And these are things that you can bring to your business today and start using. Uh, we've got a lot of data. We measure millions of text messages going in and out between homeowners and contractors. We strictly work with home improvement companies. So we know what works in terms of handling a price objection versus doesn't work. And today I'm gonna to share some of those secrets. So we find that pricing is the most common objection that we see, obviously. I'm sure you guys appreciate that and see the same thing. Uh, and there's kind of four ways that we find uh, contractors can best handle those pricing objections. Uh, the first is using the good, better, best model. Uh, so obviously you sell a certain product, there's a good model, a better model and a best model for that. And present different product options can help you, you know, surface that pricing objection, work with the homeowner to provide, uh, you know, uh, something that might work in their budget. Uh, the second is offer some sort of incentive, whether it be a discount that you already advertise, keyword already advertise. Uh, and I mentioned before that rehash is typically seen as that, let me quickly just, just drop the price, add a coupon to it, whatever. Um, if you've got something already advertised, you can surface that make the homeowner feel that you're not just messing with them and just dropping the price. You can say, hey, we already had this deal. So maybe have some offer on your website that you can provide an incentive for. Uh, the third of which is financing. We found financing to be super effective uh, in, as part of your, your follow-up strategy to pricing objections. Uh, because a lot of times homeowners don't realize that you can finance their project, especially at a really, really low rate. Uh, I've seen a lot of you guys offer you know 0% APR for, for 12, 24 months, depending on the financing company that you guys work with, um, but financing can be super effective. And the last of which is something that a lot of folks aren't doing that I encourage you guys to, to do because I've seen this work really, really well. You're already professionalizing your follow-up. Uh, you're creating that comfortable experience. They're already trusting you. You were in the home. Uh, own your price. Own your price. Say, yeah, we're the best at what we do. Uh, take a look at this recently completed job. And so there's, there's, that's really like what I found to be the best way for you guys to keep that margin and not have to discount so much um, and, and work really well. You know, you guys provided a great experience in the home. You made the homeowner feel comfortable. You followed up professionally. You're one of the few companies in your market that's actually doing that because you're doing rehash right. So own your price. It works. So, and then back to, because you're doing the rehash, because you're doing the follow-up, you can argue, require, frankly, you're showing the homeowner that you're worth the additional value that you're providing and because you do are that professional experience. Typically with the James Hardy project, at least in the Carolinas, we're anywhere from a thirty to fifty thousand dollars 
uh, overall siding costs alone, not including other accessory pieces. Um, no people are going to drop down by that. They're going to want to work with professionals, and this allows you to ask for that appropriate margin price relative to your market. I love that, Ben. Yeah, and so on the bottom right here, own your price. You're the best at what you do. So what we found to be really effective is when somebody does provide you with a price objection, uh, you could say, hey, you know, we're the best at what we do. Check out this address of a recently completed job and obviously make sure the homeowner is comfortable with you sharing that information or link them to one of your pages on your website. That's like a, a testimonial or something like that from a homeowner. So I encourage you guys to maybe spin up a couple pages on your website uh, that have pictures of a before and after and say, yeah, this is like the quality of work that we did recently in a neighborhood by next to yours. Uh, that's really effective. Uh, another term that I want to make sure that you guys have drilled in your brain is using the word investment instead of cost. Uh, and so if somebody says, hey, like, I, I, this is just like way too much money for a budget. We're, we honestly have sticker shock. We see that all the time. So uh, empathize with the homeowner. Say, I understand one of my jobs here is to find out how to make this investment, keyword investment, because they really are making an investment in their home. Uh, for all budgets, are you look, are you open to looking into other product options? So using the word investment instead of cost uh, is is going to create more of a um, a positive, I guess you could say, positive uh, experience with the homeowner. Uh, they're going to be more warm to you and more warm to having the conversation because their brain is going from negative, which is cost, to positive, which is investment. The second objection is bad sales rep. Obviously I mentioned that there's gonna be cases where in the home, the homeowner has a poor experience. Hopefully your sales reps are trained to provide that comfortable, transparent experience with the homeowner, but sometimes, you know, stuff happens. Your rep drops the ball. Uh, and what we're finding here at Hatch is that prospects are actually more likely to be pissed off at your company uh, over a bad experience with your sales rep over text message. And in my opinion, worst, worst case, over a review versus over the phone. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a one-star review of somebody that didn't buy the siding product. They literally just had one appointment and had a bad experience with the rep and they wrote a one-star review. Uh, and so let's just eliminate those as much as possible, follow up professionally. And if somebody does have a bad experience with your sales rep, they're gonna express that over text message. And here's some of the text messages that we pulled in from some of our our, uh, our folks that, that, uh, that we work with across the US. So. The rep smelled like cigarettes and stuck up the house. He wrote one legger on my quote. I'm no longer interested. Your rep sat on the couch and did not leave until we gave an answer. So there's going to be cases here, guys, where, where your sales rep drops the ball. Uh, and so how do you address these type of objections? Well, the first of which is your owner or the sales manager. I know we have a lot of owners here on the line today. Uh, should handle the objection, not the rep. Obviously, the rep was the one that provided the bad experience. The owner or sales manager should handle the objection, not the rep. And if you are professionalizing this follow-up over text message, as soon as you, you, run, you run the appointment, you follow up, any reason to not move forward, the homeowner is going to be honest and transparent with you. And we find what's crazy is pricing objections pretty common, but a, but a, but a poor experience with the sales rep is a, is a very, very common, common objection that we see. So I want to make sure we highlight that today. The second is take ownership. You know, people say the customer is always right. Yeah, sometimes the customer isn't always right. Maybe the rep was actually fine, but the homeowner is being a jerk. Either way, take ownership. It's absolutely critical to take ownership. And then the last piece is offer an incentive to make things right. I'm not saying that you should just be discounting left and right, but maybe upgrade to, you know, maybe a different product type. Just, you don't want to lose too much margin, but, but you know, offer something to make things right, whether it be maybe a, a gift card for a future purchase of your company hey you know i understand like for for you know the next job that you choose with us like here's you know a you know two thousand dollar gift card or something like that offer some sort of incentive we see upgrades as pretty common as a, of a way uh to make things right with the homeowner who had a bad experience with the rep and one thing i'll add to josh is it also gives you an opportunity if if your rep does drop the ball it gives you the opportunity as the owner as a sales manager to correct that behavior you now have a direct yep. customer engagement to say there was mistakes made. How do you as the owner, how do you as the manager, educate and train your rep to be better? So this is a great proof source to improve your sales team capabilities. Yeah, and the beauty of it is if you're using something like Hatch, you have visibility into all these conversations in one place. So you can click in as a sales manager and be like, oh, okay, that's how the person objected to the, the rehash campaign that we put them in. You know, it's, it's, it's very beautiful. And the last objection that we see, the most common one, Second most common one is timing and uncertainty. Obviously, people are going to say, hey, timing's not right. Uh, I'm actually 
you know, I don't think now is a good time. It might be coupled with pricing objections. Uh, we see that pretty often, um, but timing and uncertainty is pretty common. Uh, and so given market uncertainty right now, uh, folks are, are really leaning into locking in the price. That's super effective. Hey, I, 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 you know, we'd love to do this job for you soon. I have no idea. And you can just, you can honestly like be super transparent with the homeowner. We see that really effective. Like they understand market conditions, let them know, Hey, look, like there's a lot of uncertainty in the market today. Like it, it's important that we lock in the price as soon as possible. So number one way to handle that. Number two is setting a time to pick up the conversation. It's sales 101, set the next meeting. Uh, it's, it's really easy. And I see this oftentimes, lazy sales reps, if they get a timing objection, they say, oh, okay, like when's a good time you think that I should reach out to you? And they say, oh, uh, reach out to me, I don't know, maybe three or four months from now. No, like ha say, hey, when would be a good day for me to give you a call? Or when would be a good day for us, for me to come back by the house? Like set it a specific date instead of this kind of nebulous, you know, general time frame, uh, because that's gonna, you know, put that appointment in your homeowner's calendar, put that appointment in your calendar, and you make sure that you can pick up the conversation. So there's really three key objections that we see with respect to timing. I want to hold off, I want to prioritize another project, or I'm shopping around. And so I'm gonna talk through through one of the uh, one of the timing objections is shopping around. We're still collecting quotes and are not ready to make a decision. This is truly a timing objection. It's not really pricing. It, it could get to the point of a pricing objection because they're definitely trying to get the lowest price possible. Um, but this is a good opportunity for you to showcase your work. I understand in the meantime, you might want to check out our blog. We talk about some of the things you might want to consider when looking at other quotes. Here's the link. I'll reach out in a few days to check in. Would that be okay? So what's really cool about, about utilizing your, your brand and your content is, is that you have an opportunity to say, yeah, like I totally understand. Like, check out this this really good like blog post we wrote, or blog post that James Hardy wrote, or something that kind of keeps the homeowner interested in in what you do. Uh, that's really effective as well as you know. If somebody says to you, "We have another project we put ahead of this one," we see this all the time. It's crazy. Uh, there's a lot of companies that that say they just do siding, but they also do windows and they also do roofing. So oftentimes, when a homeowner, especially now, the data showed that we showed in the beginning is that homeowners are going to be preferring higher ticket projects. They're going to be likely looking to not just do the siding. They might want to also do the roof or also do the windows or also do the doors. So if somebody says, hey, all right, we're, we're thinking about doing something else uh, before we get to the siding. Well, this is an opportunity for you to say, hey, you know, tell me about your project. It might be less disruptive to your family if we can do both projects at the same time. And if it's a project that you can also do, that's just an, obviously an added bonus because you can collect that additional business and maybe provide an incentive for that homeowner to work with you as well. Um, we work with a lot of companies. Sorry, go ahead, Ben. So not only does that give you an opportunity to offer ancillary products like windows, roofing, siding, decking, all that stuff, raising the ticket price of your project. And as I mentioned before, it helps lower your lead costs because all of a sudden you're not having to buy all these leads when you've already got a established customer base with just a little bit of rehash. You may be able to get that priority project, say the windows done first, and then follow up later when they have a, a, a budget to allow for siding. And by the way, that homeowner would rather work with one contract to get the whole project done than have to do it multiple contracts with this process all over and over and over again. It's a very frustrating experience to try to handle with multiple contractors. So the more we can consolidate, the better. So how would you guys respond? Uh, there's a lot of people on the webinar right now. So look at this text message thread and let us know how you would respond to this objection. So the last text that we sent was, hey, Josh, just wanted to follow up here. Our team is excited to get started on your project. Have any questions on the estimate? And then we got the response from Chris, that's, or the response from Josh to Chris that says, hey, Chris, we're actually going to put this project on hold for now. Given everything that we just talked about with respect to timing objections, pricing objections, bad rep objections, the way you need to be talking to the homeowner, creating that comfortable experience with the homeowner, surfacing the objections, and then handling the objections, how would you guys respond? So head on over to the chats on the right side of your screen. Let us know how you would respond to this. And I think Ben and I will, will, will grade some of the responses given uh, what we've seen in the space with respect to rehash. So curious how you guys handle these, these objections.
And while you guys are, are typing that out, I, I want to speak to a, a couple more interesting stories that we have from customers that went from not having a rehash program or not doing it well to, 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 to doing it. Um, we had a pretty big siding company. Uh, they were doing rehash over, it was mostly over phone and they even did some direct failures. So they were pretty advanced in terms of how they were doing doing rehash because they had not just one communication strategy, but also direct mailers. But um, as soon as they started incorporating texting in their business, they went from booking around 2.5 million a year in rehash sales to 6.5 million in rehash sales, which is like an incredible jump, like a 3X jump, I believe, uh, near nearly a 3X jump uh, just from incorporating that automated texting. And so I encourage you guys, like, you know, whether or not you use something like Hatch, like, incorporate texting in your business. It's gonna be super effective for, for your rehash. And we talked through earlier how your CRM is your gold mine. It, it truly is your gold mine. Um, you've got a CRM filled with dead leads, filled with leads that you quoted that didn't buy. Now's a good opportunity, uh, or later on in the year, if you, if you guys are super, super, super booked out. Um, but you know, when you've got to milk every last lead and, and get more appointments from those leads, Go after those dead leads and start from the most recent lead and work backwards. So well, what I encourage folks to do is sort of create a report in your CRM. Look at all the all the quoted leads that you have that didn't sell. Filter by the date that they were quoted uh, and then work backwards from there. Because obviously the more, the more recent ones are going to be the ones that maybe didn't move forward with the project with somebody else. And so I encourage you guys to do that. I know we're on a little bit of delay, Ben, so I'm going to continue while uh, while people type into the chat uh, how they would handle the objection. Uh, so one way to, to handle consistent objection or handle objections consistently is using templates in your business. And Hatch, we just rolled out a new feature called Suggested Responses. Uh, that's really exciting. Uh, and it's allowing sales managers to have control over how people respond to maybe a timing objection, a price objection or even a bad rep objection. Uh, and so as you can see on the bottom right, uh, they got a, you know, a multiple project objections. You know, the quote was fine. We just have a couple of things we want to do right now. Uh, and so all we had to do here is click the suggested responses button, uh, click multiple projects objection right here. And then it populated the, the effective template to handle that objection. So, I encourage that you guys you know, utilize templates in your business. If you're a sales manager, make sure you're templatizing how you handle certain objections. And we're going to send this presentation after the webinar so you guys can copy paste them in your business. And um, as we as we wrap things up, let us know if you want to learn more about either Hatch or the James Hardy Contractor Alliance Program. And we're happy to reach out and, and share with you guys how we can work with you and, and help you guys. Um, and from the hatch side, increase your close rate seven to ten percent by systematizing that rehash process. And of course, the contractor alliance program is just like a tre tremendous uh, program that I recommend you guys be part of. Lots of great resources in there too. Uh, so not only do they have all the cap member benefits, I'm speaking a little to you, Ben, but like uh, it 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 also has like a lot of really good resources and educational material for contractors that I found to be super super effective. So I encourage you guys to check them out as well. A lot of training video, training videos, installation videos, uh, discounts and third party like hack, uh, the ability to organize your uh, hardy projects and even leverage some of our um, approved marketing resources are available on there as well. So, and if you have any questions about leveraging the, the portal, please talk to myself or to your local hard representative and we can certainly help do our best to help get you the neat things you need. Awesome stuff. Well, yeah, I appreciate, appreciate everybody's participation today. Um, it, I hope that you guys got some really good nuggets from uh, templatizing your rehash, systematizing it. Um, and yeah, if, if, if you want to learn more about any of our companies, let us know in the, in the poll. It should have just popped up on your screen. And we're happy to, to share with you guys that. And we've got a few Hatch customers on here as well. So uh, for those of you who are Hatch customers on here, I encourage you guys to use suggested responses. It's a newer feature. Uh, just head on over to your profile settings and you'll hit suggested responses and you can add those uh, to use in your business. So I encourage you guys to use that if you're a Hatch customer. Cool. All right. Well, uh, here's how to get in contact with uh, either Ben or myself. Um, so 
then your email is right there. And, and your you guys can go to usatchapcom slash James Hardy to see Hatch in action. Uh, and if you are a, a member of the James Hardy uh, Contractor Alliance program, we've got some really good uh, uh, discounting for you. Uh, so when you talk with us and you're a member of the CAP program, uh, let your uh, rep know over at Hatch when you have that conversation. And we've got some really cool incentives for you um, to jump on board and, and join the Hatch family. So appreciate everybody for hopping on. And uh, Ben, thanks, man. This has just been awesome. Josh, we appreciate the opportunity. Everyone, thank you for your time today and hope you all learn something new about it. And uh, if you need anything, please feel free to reach out. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for hopping on. A uh, shout out to uh, to Manchester for jumping in the chat there. Got to give Manchester a shout here. Uh, the price objection, or excuse me, the timing objection presented here is, uh, or the surfacing that timing objection is, hello, Chris, I understand that you may want to put your project on hold. Is there any way we can help you move forward? We have incentives, financing options, and an investment in your home is always a great idea. Financially and personally for you and your family, the comforts of new windows and the aesthetics alone can make you very happy. That's a fantastic Very response. Good. Fantastic response, Manchester. Nice work. And I encourage you guys, if you're in the chat, <laughs> uh, go check out that response, copy paste. I, I really like that a lot. So thanks everybody for hopping on. Thanks for participation. Everybody have a great rest of your week. Take care. Thanks everybody.